And when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. And if we're talking tight ends and we're going into round two, maybe round three, give me Ian Thomas, please. Just let's, I mean, let's just do the damn thing. Just based on giving his overall ability. Um, again, I like his arm. I think he can make every throw. The pick at number 12 is in. All right, we're back. Cover one, the draft podcast. I'm Russell Brown. With me today, Purdue linebacker and 2020 NFL draft prospect, Marcus Bailey. Marcus, my man, how we doing? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on the podcast. Yeah, man, uh, for sure. Anytime, uh, anytime you want to talk ball and break down film, we got you over here at CoverOne.net where you can get unlimited amount of X's and O's. As you guys know, if you don't know, become a premium subscriber today. Just simply click the premium subscribe button and you guys will get all the information that you need. You can get deeper information on X's and O's and all of that good stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about it here with Marcus, but we really want to talk about his journey through Purdue, up through high school, all the way to now for the 2020 NFL draft, where we are getting uh, closer and closer by the day, by the minute. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that being said, I mean, first and foremost, obviously a ton of stuff going on around the world. Um, I, I know I said pre-show, but just for everybody out there knowing, I mean, are you, your family, you guys staying safe right now with COVID-19? Yeah, like you said, this is um, unprecedented times and, uh, you know, everyone is is forced to adapt to the, these circumstances. So um, I've been able to stay safe. I, I'm, I'm currently still in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I, live by, I live by myself, so I don't have to worry about being around too many people. And then my mom and brother are still back in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and they're staying safe. They're, they're taking all the necessary precautions. Uh, and then my other family that's in Dayton, Ohio, they're doing the same thing. So I've been keeping in contact with everyone and making sure that everyone's staying safe. So. so. Yeah, that's good to hear. I mean, and, you know, obviously everybody, as I say, every podcast right now, keep washing their hands and, and keep doing the, the necessary steps to staying safe and staying out of contact with people for sure. But let's go through your journey from high school to Purdue and, and really your recruiting process. You know, take this for what it's worth, Marcus Bailey uh, talking with here. But, uh, you know, 24-7 sports had you listed for a as a three-star recruit like I said take that for what it's worth but you know you had been uh, I, I'm really you know a ton of visits a ton of offers had come through for you you know places like Duke and, and Indiana you know even some some places in Ohio like Bowling Green and Akron and, and you went to Purdue so um, what was the really the, the decision for you to go to Purdue and were you leaning towards anywhere else when you were going through recruitment? Yeah, so you mentioned some of the schools that it offers by. Um, Duke was one of the ones that was like ended up being my my top two. I was really uh, deciding between Purdue and Duke at the end, but then I had offers from like West Virginia, Boston College, and Pitt, um, Northwestern that I was considering a lot too. Um, but you know, I know you went to Michigan State, and then you know I grew up in Ohio, so um, I mean I wanted to play I wanted to play Big Ten ball. So I, I definitely wanted to uh, – those those are my main schools I was I was looking at. And Purdue only being, you know, three and a half hours away from Columbus was far enough away where I could get away and, um, you know, do my own thing and become independent, but also close enough where on weekends that we, we had some time off, I can go back and visit home and see my, see my friends and everything that uh, I went to high school with. Um, you know, I love the, the college town feel. Columbus is like a low-key big city, so – I wanted to kind of get away and um, get the true college experience. And obviously Purdue being very academically prestigious uh, was a big selling point as well. And um, the, you know, I I knew I was going to have a chance to come in and play early as well since Purdue wasn't doing too great then. So, um, you know, I'm happy with my decision and, um, you know, I'm glad that I decided to go there. Yeah. Now, I mean, I know Ohio state didn't offer the, the scholarship or anything, but I know you had went there on a visit. Had they have given you an offer, would that have changed anything for you, do you think? Or, or were you really set on getting a little bit away from Columbus and, and kind of doing your own thing? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I definitely wanted the offer from Ohio, Ohio State just being, you know, in central Ohio. Mm-hmm. But I, I still would have taken visits and 
I can't say for certain that's where I would have went if I would have gotten the offer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so you go to Purdue, obviously you have a very successful career there, despite some of the, the hurdles that you had to, to overcome, some of the things that you had to do um, to, to get to where you are today. I mean, 2015, when you went there, you had played in three games, you really had a breakout game against Virginia Tech that really put yourself on the map. And then obviously the knee injury happened there. So Walk me through kind of that process of that first knee injury in 2015, because I mean, that was, you know, five years ago. So what, what really took place? When did you, you know, did you know right away or did you have to have a bunch of tests done? And then really what was that rehab process like for you in 2015? Yeah, let me, uh, let me think back to five years real quick. And then, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But um, like you said, the Virginia Tech, I remember the Virginia Tech uh, Tech game being a really good one for me. And I remember, um, being told that I'll, if I would have been stayed healthy, I was going to start after that as a true freshman from the rest of the year. So, um, I, you know, that was my first like serious knee injury or serious injury in general, where it was going to put me out for a significant time. So, and I was, I was really young, only 18 years old. So that was, uh, that was definitely a lot, but I was able to just accept it for what it was at some point And then just, um, you know, look at it as an opportunity to overcome diversity and um, realized that I didn't really have a choice. I mean, what, what else was I going to do to sit there and be upset the whole time or actually just shift my, my mindset and, you know, try to try to do something positive with that and just use the time I had off to, you know, maybe improve my, you know, um, you know my mental side of the game and learn from the older guys and do whatever I could to get ready for that next year. And, I, you know, I was able to get surgery and rehab uh, at an extremely quick rate and come back for spring ball and then have a great, and, you know, that started my actual career my uh at Purdue uh, you know starting 40 games straight after that so yeah and, and I mean you really did and after that I mean it was 2016 boom you came out almost 100 tackles or so um you were all over the field and and really said hey no, nothing's gonna stop me here and, and then like you said you know you played 40 straight games um you know were you considering going pro in 2018 or were you definitely coming back 2019 to Purdue because there was a lot of conversation that in 2019 for the 2019 draft that you would have been you know one of the top linebackers in the draft and and there was maybe some talks of maybe you coming back or going pro so I mean what what made you come back yeah uh, I mean I was considering it after having such a such a great year mm -hmm. but um, there I had to get a hip procedure done that was like, it wasn't like the ACL injury where there was like something that happened where I hurt. It was like something that had kind of happened over time because I was, I was born with like a, an impingement that they had to fix. And it's, you know, it caused me to have, have uh, my labrum torn uh, over the course of years playing football. And that kind of started to bother me going into the 2018 season. And, um, you know, I got it checked out after and, um, you know, they said I had to get my labrum repaired. So I didn't think that would have been a good idea to, try to go pro when I would have went to the combine and they would have maybe seen that I had a bad torn labrum. So I figured to get it fixed then and then come back and have a good senior year and uh, be able to even boost my draft stock higher. But obviously I wasn't anticipating tearing my ACL, um, you know, on my right side, but mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. Um, but that's, that's why I did come back for my you know 2019 season. Cause that was the main reason. And I thought I could even boost my draft stock higher if I would have had a great year. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, you were on pace for a great year. I mean, there's nothing you can do on a, on a knee injury like that. I mean, you, you had a really good game against Vanderbilt. You had a great game against Nevada. You were off to a really good start to start this season. And obviously it just didn't pan out that way, but you've been grinding for the last, you know, damn near almost, it feels like a year at this point, uh, getting ready for this process that's happening here in a couple of weeks. So walk me through really what's 2019 been, um, you know, not obviously being able to plan everything, but obviously I'm sure there's been plenty of, grinding the tape rehabbing and everything are you fully cleared now are you feeling good how are you feeling now yeah I um you know this the rehab process was was uh you know mentally when I, okay when I first got injured it was it was really frustrating for me because I was I was uh, poised to have a really big year but after I got hurt you know there wasn't much time just like I said like with my freshman year I didn't have much time to sit there and sulk you know, mm -hmm. especially, especially with the circumstance this year, as soon as I got hurt, I had to figure out who I was going to sign with, had to figure out who I was going to get surgery by, where I was going to go train at, you know, all of these, um, you know, 
all of these events had to take place after where I, you know, I would have a good plan in place. So there was no time for me to, you know, be sad or be upset. Um, so I got my surgery down in Dallas by Dr. Cooper. Um, he was, who's a great surgeon, did a great job. And that was October 1st. And then I, I continued to rehab there for a few weeks, came back to Purdue rehab uh, until the end of the season. And then, you know, I had signed with my agent, um, you know, at the end of the season there. And, you know, he, he told me the best option for me was to come to Phoenix, Arizona and work with uh, physical therapist Brett Fisher. Brett Fisher is the therapist for the Cardinals as well. He worked with, um, you know, Miles Jack when he was coming back from his, his knee injury and Tyron Matthew when he was coming back from his second knee injury. Um, and so he, you know, there's a lot of guys that come in there that, uh, that, and that's still coming there now. They're NFL guys that, you know, train there, rehab there. So my point is that night was a great facility. I got there around uh, like this mid December, started rehab, and I was about two months out then. And they put a great program in place for me, did everything he told me to do. Uh, I was really ahead of schedule the entire time and, uh, you know, went through the process. And then I, you know, got the combine invite. I knew I wasn't going to be able to do anything there, but my main objective there was to go there and, and, and show the teams I was healthy, like with my scans. Uh, so I went to the combine and, and, you know, for everything I've heard about my, about my MRIs, they all, they all look good. And so I, around that time, like a week before the combine, I had went to see my surgeon again for my last checkup. And he told me after I got back from the combine and I got back to Phoenix, I could start doing full speed stuff and start getting ready for my pro day. At that time, you know, we weren't we weren't yeah. in the situation that we are now. So I was planning on, you know, Purdue's Pro Day was going to be scheduled for April 2nd. I was planning to go there and show teams I was completely healthy, do a full linebacker workout, do whatever they wanted me to do. Um, but we had to adapt. And, you know, I was, I mean, I'd been working full speed with the NFL group for a few weeks, had been working on the drills. And so, you know, my agent got a video, a video guy together and we got a, you know, plan together. And I just did the combine workout at the facility and uh, made it, made a cut up and sent it to teams. And uh, I know Ian Rappaport tweeted it out. And um, and now we are here. Here we are now. I feel really good. I did that workout. I you know I didn't have any swelling or soreness after that. I've gotten uh, a couple of medical rechecks done. You know because the medical recheck that you know guys would normally go to in Indianapolis this upcoming weekend got canceled. Mm -hmm. So I saw the Cardinals doctor Gary Wazlewski last week and he did a check on me and then this past Monday I did another check with uh, my physical therapist after the workout and so you know my point in saying all that is I've done everything I can I, up to this point to show teams that I'm healthy and uh, now I just have to you know I've controlled I can control now I just have to let the chips fall where they may yeah well and I mean it makes me smile to definitely know that you, you know things are coming back positive for you. Uh, there's no, you know, negative results. There's none of that. And it's, everything seems like everything's, you know, starting to fall into place for you, like you said. So, I mean, that, that's good. And I'm glad that you've been able to work out. I know this whole, you know, situation that we're in as a, as a world, as a, as a, as a planet, I mean, it's, it's made things definitely difficult, especially for so many different draft prospects. I've talked to quite a few that have just said, you know, I've, been sending just videos and, and doing those types of things so obviously you've sent the videos have you gotten any feedback or uh any type of information from teams uh to where you've been able to kind of sit down and do like a facetime or or something like that with them yeah so i you know i sent the the pro day video was sent out and i got great feedback from everyone that that hit me that they said i look good so I look explosive, smooth, uh, and that's all I really, you know, that's all you can really tell from video is how how does he look just to the eye test. So I got good feedback from that. And then in terms of like meeting with teams via FaceTime, I have talked to a few teams. Um, I know the, the Patriots is one of the first teams that started doing the FaceTime thing with me. So I'm, you know, it was like an hour long FaceTime with their linebacker coach, and we, you know, we talked ball. He had me draw some things up and. I was in the conference room where I trained at and I was able to you know, draw things on the whiteboard and he drew up some of their plays. And, and it was like, you know, it was kind of a makeshift meeting there. And then this past week, you know, I've talked to the Jaguars. I've talked to um, the Texans, uh, talked to the Bears. And then there's a few other teams that have been texting me back and forth, Bengals. So, I mean, there's there's been maybe around 10 teams that, that seem – like legit interested the Ravens were one of the teams that met with me for me at the combine and there's other teams that have been you know talking to people that I know that to let me know so uh, I know there's teams that are interested but I mean obviously I understand like why there's concerns too but you know yeah 
Yeah, well, and I mean, that's good, though. I mean, there's, there's always a positive when you see so many teams having that interest. Obviously, there's probably a lot of interest on the medical side, but the tape does check out. And that's where I want to jump into is just talking about your tape. And, you know, obviously, we can't go into a ton of detail about 2019, but we can talk about 2018. And I posted this last night, actually, I did a video with some audio on it. And everybody wants to talk about a player for this upcoming draft of how they had a dominant performance. What game was a dominant performance? What, what was one of the most dominant games? And I circle back to 2018 of Marcus Bailey against Ohio state. And that's the game that I think out of any prospect, that was one of the most dominant games I've seen for a player in this draft class alone. I mean, you had 15 tackles, you had the pick six to end the game and it wasn't even just the stats sheet stuff. And the play that I broke down last night, there was a bubble screen and you know, they had the numbers, but you did a great job engaging on the receiver as you were on the hash there and you just read, reacted, and you completely fought your way to the sideline and closed off the field so that your safety could come down. Whoever number 41 is, I don't know his name offhand, but he yeah, came. That's my guy, Jake. He's my roommate in college. Yeah. Jake yeah. He was, he's the 49ers right now. Oh yeah. So yeah. So he came down, he makes a great tackle down the sideline and you, you were a big reason to why that even happened. So, I mean, walk me through that game. If you can remember, I mean, I, I know a lot of stuff's been going on, but I'm, I, I know that's a game that meant a lot to you because it was against Columbus or against Ohio state, a team from Columbus, as everybody knows. So walk me through that game. Yeah. It's funny. I, I think I saw that uh, a play you posted and, to be honest, I thought that was like one of my worst plays of the game. I thought I could have did a way better job getting off the block, but I did. I was able to keep leverage a little bit on that and make mm-hmm. make sure my my teammate can make the tackle, which was my job being the force defender. But um, overall, yeah, like you said, that game was probably my most dominant in my career, and it was uh, you know our team in general just had a, such a dominant game that night. Mm-hmm. on all cylinders our offense was was making a lot of plays everyone on deep ball and and it was um and there was a lot that went into that that game and um all the all the all the uh, situations that were going on so that's definitely something one of the best games and best moments in my college career uh I was, I was being so hyped up for it because a lot of my high school go to Ohio State and uh, I knew a lot of my family and friends were gonna be watching the game and and it was against number two. So, you know, number mm-hmm. two, Ohio, I knew it was a chance for me to make, you know, more national attention and make plays against big time, you know, big time players on a big time team. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you did that. I mean, you certainly did that. So, I mean, we, we can obviously talk Big Ten football all day long. What, how, how do you prepare for a team like Ohio State? I mean, honestly, I, I didn't get to ask some of the Michigan State guys that I talked to on this question, but I'll ask you because obviously, you take it with, you know, a little bit of a chip on your shoulder for sure. And it becomes a little bit more personal, but how do you prepare for a team that does have the athletes that they have, the the recruits that they have, and really the coaches that they have? I mean, we, we all know they're a well-rounded football team from top to bottom. And they, we all know that for the most part, they're a national contender every year, but you did a great job, obviously in that game, your team did, you upset them, but how do you prepare for a team like that um, on a film perspective when they have so many weapons on offense? Yeah, and they definitely had a great team and great weapons. But I think one of the biggest things um, for a team like that and for a game like that is you don't want to overthink it and you don't want to make it more than what it is. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, I remember all week, where, you know, our media was asking me, how is it going to feel playing against Ohio State? How's this? How's that? And, of course, you know, I was I was hyped up for it. But you can't let that that blind your your preparation and make you do things that you don't normally do. And so in terms of my preparation, I had to, you know, keep it, keep it the same. Um, You know, when you're watching film, there's certain things you look for. And then I don't, it's not like you couldn't treat it. Like you couldn't act like it was, you know, you have to act like you before. And so, you know, I guess I can go through this a basic week of my preparation. I usually on Mondays, uh, we usually start, by watching um it's called p and tens it's like possession and 10 mm-hmm. and that'll so like we'll go through a cut up of just like the beginning of a lot of their like the first plays of possession first plays of the game first plays of the half and so on monday that that we'll go through that and then throughout the course of the week i'll try to watch uh as many games as i can just like whole game through just to like get a flow of the a uh, feel of the flow of the game 
and um, situationally what they like to do. And, you know, after a few days and seeing formations at practice and I'm watching film, I'm, I'm able to put up some our calls and our game plan for the week and be able to start anticipating like what, what they're going to do based on their formation and where I would fit at exactly. So like I, when I watch film, I like to do visualization a lot and just watch what they do or what the, you know, the defense do. I try to put myself as much as possible into that exact, like in the film. And I try to visualize in place where I'm going to step everything like against going against a lineman or a receiver or a running back. And then I think that just helps me with my play speed a lot doing that visualization. For sure. That, and that's interesting. So for you as a linebacker, you have so many responsibilities. And I, I mean, you are one of the more versatile linebackers in this class, hands down, because you play everywhere. You're playing in the slot, covering those slot receivers. You're covering tight ends. You're covering running backs. You're dropping in a zone as that mid-hook defender. You're rushing off the edge. You're playing in the box. You're literally all over the football field doing multiple different jobs. I don't want to ask how you prepare for that, because I know you're a smart guy. I mean, I, I know that. You're a semifinalist for the Campbell Trophy. You know, nation, you know, that's for the nation's top scholar athlete in football. So it's no question you're a smart guy. But with that being said, as you as a linebacker, how, like having all of those roles, it's not so much how you prepare for it, but how, what, what do you look for as you are all over the field? Are there certain things that you look for? Is it, is it the quarterback? Is it the offensive line? Is it everything? Or, or is it just – how, how do you do it well it's different whenever you're playing that position so it's like you have to like shift your mindset so I, I feel like I do a good job of being versatile because uh when I'm playing you know back or out in space it's like I have a you have a different mindset okay I'm I'm playing this position it's not the same as playing in the box mm -hmm. when I'm in the a gap and I'm, I'm playing downhill on inside zone or a counter or power like it's a different skill set and a different mindset you have when playing football like that when then when you're on the edge it's there's there's just a different mindset for each position and so you know when I'm at that position just already like it's kind of like you put that hat on like you're like okay I'm here now and so like your whole frame or lens of reference is like uh, is through that and so that's what you kind of like that's what makes it easier for me it's like able to shift it like I'm like it's like I'm switching like my my like uh like split personality it's like boom okay now I'm here <laughs> now I'm here now I'm here now I'm here and then you just kind of have to think about it through those different lenses and um, it helps you kind of separate it. Um, but also like in that same token, like movement is movement and, you know, like and every, in every position leverage and, you know, separation is going to be like things that are going to be able to help you uh, explosion, suddenness, quickness, decisiveness, like those things, there's certain qualities that are going to, you know, be consistent regardless of where you're playing on the field, but there's just certain tech are specific to each position for sure i appreciate you summing that up for me and really giving me the, the details on that um outside of obviously the, the injuries the teams that you've spoken with i mean I'm, I'm sure that's something that they've obviously talked about a ton and that's something that they want you to obviously stay healthy and everything but have they told you anything as far as something that you could work on or get better with your game as, as you get ready for the next level um well, like you said, you know, availability is the best ability, as mm -hmm. they say. Um, and I think the league is just transforming so much to a, such a, you know, a passing athlete dominant league, spread out league more now is you need backers that can, that can really cover it, understand concepts and then be able to play man too. So that's why you see overall like this shift of backers, like going away from the big mm -hmm. bruisers to more guys that are smaller and quicker. Um, so just, you know, of course, I'm just getting back to doing things full speed. So, you know, throughout the course of the summer, I don't know what's going to happen with off-season programs and things like that. But those will be things I'll just be getting ready for uh, for the season is just uh, improving on my, my coverage and um, improving on my uh, ability to understand content and speed and all that kind of stuff. So. For sure. And, I'll, you know, I got two more for you and then we're done. But, uh, you know, if a team drafts you, the pick's going to get in whatever team drafts you, what, what kind of player are they getting out of Marcus Bailey? Yeah, well, first of all, you're going to get a really tough player, a guy that's going to give you consistent effort day in and day out. You're going to get a smart player, an experienced player, because I've played in, you know, multiple different schemes. I've had three different defensive coordinators from my time at Purdue, and I've been productive in all of them. And you're going to get a really 
uh, versatile and instinctive player. Um, I play, like I said, I played multiple positions. I've been successful at a lot of them. And if you watch my film, I feel like I have a really good knack of getting off blocks and just seeing things that maybe other guys don't see or just seeing the field a little bit, a little bit better, a little more broad. So I feel like you're going to get a guy that's going to come in and be able to give you great effort, process things quickly and add value right away. For sure. I can dig it. I, I hope uh, some of my, you know, my favorite team, hopefully they're listening, but uh, I doubt it because they're idiots. But, uh, um, you know, outside of football, what can we do or what can we find you doing um, outside of football? Yeah, I love, uh, I love value quality. Time. I like spending time with my, with my friends and just uh, hanging out, um, you know, doing whatever. But I also like trying, like just trying new things and being adventurous, like, you know, I've been to Arizona. I've gone hiking a few times. I like being out, out, uh, you know, outdoors. I like to compete. It's like doing like little fun games, like uh, you know, it's like cornhole, things like that, like any type of activities. Um, and then I mean, you know, watching TV shows. I just started Tiger King. Everyone's been talking about it. I started Tiger King. Uh, shows wild. Game, so I, gotta, I gotta finish that. But yeah, I like watching shows. Um, you know, watching comedy shows, things like that. Just nothing too crazy. Just. You know, things that a lot of people like. Yeah, Tiger King's wild man, Carol Baskins. You never know. She's, she's yeah. I haven't, I haven't got, I haven't finished, I haven't uh, watched enough to make my own opinion on it yet. But All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I won't spoil nothing for you. But Marcus, my man, I appreciate your time. Uh, where can we find you on Twitter, social media, all that good stuff? Yeah. So on Twitter, it's uh, mb underscore boiler twenty one. On Instagram, it's um, mb two underscores twenty one. And then I just uh, just hopped on uh, TikTok. Just hopped on TikTok a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get with the times, I guess. But uh, that's uh, that's MB three underscores twenty one. So I'm um, just trying to trying to trying to expand my expand my horizons a little bit. Make some content on there. So follow me on there too. And then I don't really get on Facebook that much um, anymore. Facebook is. I don't, I rarely check it. So yeah, Facebook's the new MySpace for sure, but definitely smash a follow button guys on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok for my guy, Marcus Bailey. Uh, thank you again, my man, for taking the time. You guys, of course, can find me on Twitter at Russ NFL draft. Be sure to smash the follow buttons and be sure to stay tuned for everything that we have draft content wise, all the way up to the draft leading through the draft and beyond. So find us on Apple podcast Spreaker for cover one, the NFL draft podcast, but until next time, This is Cover One, the Draft Podcast.